Okay, welcome back to startabusiness.org.za. We're at module two, part two. And the title of this module is Match New Venture Opportunity to Market Needs. It's unit standard 119669. In part one, you'll remember that we had two case studies, making friends and working for free. Just to recap then, making friends in business is an essential part of being successful, as well as working for free, because when you work for free, you're able to see the opportunities that others aren't seeing, and they become apparent to you and become something you can create a business out of. Anyway, back to this module, matching opportunities. So what does marketing mean? It's about selling products to the public at a profit. But first you've got to understand the needs of your market before you can begin to market to them. Marketing's all about the four P's. Product, price, place, promotions. We'll discuss these in detail to follow. Okay, we've got a case study for you. It's called the Bartlett Rail Line. It's adapted from Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. In the early days of America, the government wanted to put a railway line from the East Coast to the West Coast. The problem was there was a large ranch owned by Mr. Bartlett right in the middle where the railway line would want to go through. To put the railway line around Mr. Bartlett's farm would cost a large amount of money extra, which they didn't want to do. So they approached Mr. Bartlett and said, I tell you what, we'll pay you X amount of million dollars that we can put the railway line through your farm. Would, can you please allow us to do such a thing? And Mr. Bartlett said no. It wasn't about money. He was quite happy with the farm. He didn't want a railway line splitting the farm in two. So the government got together and they thought to themselves, how do we approach Mr. Bartlett? Because to put the line around Mr. Bartlett's farm was going to cost way too much money. And one of the delegates said, how about we call that section of the farm the Bartlett Railway Line? Hmm, that's not a bad idea, thought the others. So they approached Mr. Bartlett with the concept. Mr. Bartlett was ecstatic. He thought to himself, a railway line named after me? That's amazing. Anyway, he decided to take two days about it and think about it and came back and said he'd do it. The government had achieved what they wanted to. They would put their railway line through Mr. Bartlett's farm at no extra cost and just be able to call it the Bartlett Railway Line section. So when you look at this case study, you realize that in order to sell something, you may have to tickle someone's ego. It's not just about your product, but it could quite easily be about how you tickle what somebody else thinks is important. All right, so we've talked broadly about what the four P's are. Let's just try to understand them in detail. Let's take a look at product. So there are two types of product, a tangible product, which might be a motor car, and you get an intangible product, such as an insurance policy. Both of them are offerable to clients. A product like a car is easy to compare against another product, whereas a service makes it a bit more difficult. Differentiation between a product and a service is something that you'll want to do as an entrepreneur to make your product competitive in the marketplace. It's a bit easier to make a service more competitive than it is a product such as a car, because a car is easily copyable. Let's take a look at price. Price is an essential part of marketing your product. If your price is too high, you may not get sales. And if your price is too low, you may not get sales either. So you want your price to be in comparison to competitors. But you can use price to differentiate your product once again. Take a bottle of perfume, for example. A small bottle of perfume can cost hundreds of rands, and yet the product inside is costing very little. So the price is high to create a perceived value of quality. However, when the price is low, the opposite can be true. If the price is too low, people can think that the quality isn't there. So a bottle of perfume which costs a rand, people may not purchase because they think, well, this just isn't the right product to give my wife or girlfriend. Let's take an example where you've got a unique product. Now, this product is first on the market. Don't forget you probably got quite a bit of research and development costs behind this product, and you'll want to recover those costs. So your price might be quite high, knowing there aren't competitors around. However, as the competitors enter the market, you're likely to have to lower your price to stay in line with the competition, because they're able to charge a cheaper price having not had the research and development costs that you had. Uh, an interesting story I once heard from a friend of mine was that 
They were trying to decide in the early days in the 70s how to price the repairs on a TV set. They sat around for hours around the boardroom table trying to figure this out. What should we charge? At that time, TV sets in South Africa were quite new. After hours of delegating around the boardroom, they eventually figured out that if they walked across to the competitor and had a look at what he was pricing repairs on TV were for, they could choose that pricing. So sometimes pricing can just be what are your competitors pricing it at, and therefore you know how you should be in the marketplace. Okay, so let's look at place. Place refers to how you're going to distribute your product. You might have a shop, for example, and that's where your products are distributed from. Or you might be a car manufacturer that manufactures cars in South Africa and exports them around the world. They've got to think of the logistics about sending products onto ships and getting them to the destination through dealerships. Dealerships and franchises, those are all place-orientated things. And place has an important bearing on the cost of your product and what it lands at for your consumer. Okay, and then we've got promotions. Now, promotions is an integral part of marketing. How to tell people about your product. Think about how you're going to possibly package the product. Will you have a red bow around it? Or will you have a sign outside your shop? Will you use the newspaper, flyers, television, radio? How are you going to tell people, possibly even word of mouth, this is the best way to market your product? Happy customers are likely to talk about your product. But bear in mind, unhappy ones are also just as equally going to say something bad about your products or your service that you offer. So promotions is about letting people know that you exist in the world. Promotions is also about discounting the product. Buy one, get one for free, that sort of thing. Or there's a 33% discount this month on this product. Those are the kinds of things that promotions are about. Attracting customers to your products and letting them know where your product can be found. Okay, so marketing therefore is all about how to use the four P's to promote your product or your service. So segmentation is a way we can divide the larger market into smaller areas. Let's take a look at some of these, such as age, sex, income, geographical area like where they live, maybe their culture might be a segment, or even a religion could be a segment. By dividing the market into various segments, we're able to make a different marketing mix for each segment and therefore create a profit for each segment. So how will you segment your market? Now we're at the topic of market research, and this is paramount to creating a correct marketing mix strategy. Market research is an integral part of the marketing mix. We need to know what we're going to do or what strategy we're going to follow when tackling our marketing mix. Have a look at these. For example, where there may be a gap in the market. What sort of pricing are the competitors doing? What strategies are they following? What competitive advantage will our product or service have? In other words, that's something that we do uniquely that's different from the competitors. What sort of product development will we have to do to meet the marketing mix and to meet the segment we're talking to? We need to understand the needs of our customers. We need to understand very clearly what do they expect and what perceptions they may have as to our products and services. And so by understanding the research we've undertaken, it helps us with developing our strategy and our four Ps. And it also helps us to know what sort of problems we might come across when developing our four Ps. Okay, so bear in mind when we're creating our marketing plan, we must make sure that our goals are smart, specific, measurable, achievable, and realistic and time-based. Something that's also worth noting is a product or service does have a life cycle. And what's a life cycle? Well, you've got the introductory phase, the growth phase, the maturity phase, and then the decline phase. So during the growth phase of a product or a service, things are booming, the product is taking off like anything. Okay, during the growth phase, there's a growth in the market. Competitors are entering the market. They're starting to compete against what you've started. In the maturity phase of a product life cycle, you'll see that the product reaches a peak in sales. Entrance of competitors is unlikely because pricing has become tight and the margins have become smaller. And finally, we get the decline stage. And in the decline stage, the product is pretty much on the way out. So when you enter the market, you need to know where your product is and at what stage of the market life cycle or the product life cycle you're at. 
Again, we go back to three words, research, research, and more research. So this case study is called Research, Research, Research. It's called the Shoeshine Machines, and it's a case study of my own. I recall in 2005, we had um, just sold our IT business, and we'd made quite a bit of money, and we decided to embark on what we found a product in America to be the Shoeshine Machines. Fantastic little machines. A shoe shining machine at the bottom with advertising at the top. The advertising at the top would scroll so that people could place advertising and ultimately that was where we would make our money. It sounded like a great idea and it was. So we invested all of our hard earned money into the shoe shine machines. 10 came to South Africa. We secured the rights to Africa. It was amazing. This was going to make millions. They arrived and we set them up and decided to take them around the country to sell the advertising, only to discover that the bigger players didn't want to buy segmented advertising. That is, a three-second piece with lots of other advertisers scrolling across the screen. They wanted to own the machine, and if they owned the machine, the cost of the advertising would have cost too much. So our idea of starting the shoeshine machines fell flat on its back. The only way to make money was to sell the advertising space segment by segment. To sell it to just one advertiser would have cost too much, and we therefore couldn't do it. We lost all that money we'd invested, and we had to start our lives all over again. So the moral of this story is, when you're doing your research, make sure you know exactly what the product will sell for, who it will sell to, and who will buy the product at the end of the day. Because if you don't do your research, you're heading down a road which can cost you a lot of money.